Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. In uh, this one we'll be going over setting up vir runtime virtual textures in your project. We'll be using the project uh, that we've previously used in uh, our other tutorials and you probably recognize some of the terrain textures here and um, also the Megascan assets. I've downloaded one of the, I believe it's called an Icelandic cliff, Icelandic terrain. So for this one, what we're going to look at is, uh, like I said, runtime virtual textures. This tutorial is heavily based on a Twitter post by Chris Murphy, as well as on some of the documentation coming from uh, 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 from Epic. So let's uh, let's get into it. Well, first of all, what we need to do is create to um, uh, enable virtual texture support in our project. So in order to do that, let's go to Edit, Project Settings, and if we click all settings, then we look for virtual texture support. And uh, I've already enabled mine because you know you have to restart the engine once you do. And um, now let's um, take a look at um, what we need to get this going. Uh, one of the things that we also need is a couple of runtime virtual textures. So in order to do that, let's go into our content browser here, and I'm going to right click and go to materials and textures, runtime virtual texture. So one of them is going to be our environment, environment, I think I spelled this horribly, underscore RVT. So let's take a look at what's in here. By default, the base will be fine for this one. This one's going to be sampling, as you can see, the base color, normal, roughness, and specular. Now we're going to need another one of these. And so again, we'll just go to a runtime virtual texture. So this is going to be an environment. And this one we're gonna, is going to be the height. So this way we'll be able to, uh, on a asset per asset basis, we're going to be able to set how much blending this as it is doing into the terrain. So let's call this also underscore RVT. I'm going to do a quick save. And let's open this one up. And by default you'll notice their base color, normal, roughness, specular. We want to set this to world height. And save. And that's it. That's it for these, this part. Now what we need to do is um, we're going to need to create a couple of, of a runtime virtual texture volume. It's kind of a mouthful, but it's what they call it. So runtime virtual texture volume. Let's drag that in. One of the things that you'll notice, this is a very small asset to begin with. And if you click away from it, you, there's no way for you to select it. Uh, so the world outliner is what we need to do. Now in order to set the scale for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be selecting the landscape source actor. And I'm going to be doing a copy rotation and copy bounds. As you can see, even though it doesn't, um, you know, cover the entire terrain, it does um, do a, quite a bit of an upscale to this. And let's do the Z scaling to a thousand as well. Okay. So now that we have this one, this one we can assign our environment RVT texture we just created. Now we're going to have to create another one of these. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm just holding Alt and then dragging up. And this one is going to be our environment height. Okay, so now that we have these two set up, what we need to do is select the terrain, and if you scroll down to the virtual texture, let's add both of these on here. So we have you know, the regular RVT and then the one for our height. And virtual texture and main path should be fine. Okay, I'm going to do a quick save. So now what we need to do is actually start working on our materials. So let's start with the terrain since that one's the simplest one. So I'm going to be making sure that my terrain is um, I'm using the the correct master texture here. I mean material here. So let's drag this in. And this one is going to be the simpler one of the two. Um, first of all, what I need to do is I'm going to add a runtime virtual texture output. And in our my output, I'm going to have base color, I'm going to have roughness, of course specular if you have it, normal, 
and that should be good. What I need to do now is add the world height. So that one's going to be based off of the world position. And from here I'm going to use a mask, component mask. And I'm going to be getting the B channel so it's like, you know, up and down. And I'm going to um, connect that into my world height. Let's go ahead and save that. It's going to have to compile some shaders. Okay, there we go. It's compiling the shaders. Uh, going at a pretty decent pace for my machine. Okay, now that we have the terrain done, let's do the asset. So the asset is going to be the little bit more complicated stuff. And again, props to Chris uh, for um, for creating this post that was very helpful. Okay, let's open. I'm going to be opening the instance just so I can get to the proper master material here. So you probably notice um, those of you that have worked with some of the materials from uh, Quixel, you probably noticed this and um, you will recognize it easily. Now it doesn't have to be the specific one, you can use this on your own materials, but one thing that I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to turn this into, I'm going to have the material use material attributes. So as you can see this turns into material attribute, this is our kind of an our, um, output node for this material. One thing that I need to do is I'm going to do a make material attributes attributes so I can connect everything that comes from our uh, you know existing textures so we have we have base color we have specular we have metallic roughness and then uh, I believe this is normal let's make sure yep that's the normal okay perfect now that we have this in place what we need to do now is actually have a way to blend it with our runtime virtual textures. So first of all I'm going to be getting a runtime virtual texture sample. Perfect. Now for this one let's get uh, and create some material attributes. Set. So I'm going to use a node called set material attributes and to this one I'm going to be adding this is uh, an array type setup. So I'm going to be adding what we have here. So we have base, specular, roughness, and normal. So let's create four of them. One, two, three, four. So we have base. Then we need, uh, let's kind of keep it in order. So specular, then roughness, and normal. And let's plug these in. So base color, specular, roughness, and normal. Okay, now in order for us to do the blending between this material attributes and this one, let's use a node called a blend material attributes. So we have uh, the runtime virtual texture in A and then B is going to be for our um, basic material. Now from here we're going to add a, a, a static switch parameter so that way we can switch whether we want this asset to use it or not use it because as you'll see, there's quite a few added um, uh, there's quite a few added shader complexity to this. So I'm going to call this parameter. Uh, let's see what did Chris call it. So I'm just going to follow uh, his lead on this. So we call it blend with environment, and by default it's going to be false. But if it's true, then we're going to use our blending. If it's false, just the regular, our regular um, textures here. Now let's do the alpha. This is a little bit of more of the complicated. No, not really complicated, but uh, you know, a little bit more involved. So um, for the alpha, what we're, we're going to do is another runtime virtual texture, and also make sure when you, whenever you add these in, that you actually put in your virtual texture. So like I said, this one's going to be our environment RVT and you can see this is already set to its um, uh, its content. Uh, I'm going to do control W, just duplicate that. And for this one I'm going to be using the height. And that one's updating to world height as, uh, properly. Now just as before, we're going to be using a world position. 
and uh, getting the B channel out of this. So I'm going to be using a subtract node. So for this one, let's plug in the world height. And now we're going to be adding a couple of parameters. So again, subtract. And I'm going to hold S and click to add a parameter, a scalar parameter. And I'm going to call this blend bias. So let's set this to 20. And plug it into B. And we're going to also do a blend distance. So this one I'm going to call blend distance. And this one is going to be a division. So divide by the distance. Okay, now that we have that in place, let's use a saturate node. So kind of just clamping it uh, to a 0 to 1. And this one, we're going to be adding it to some of the properties of our asset. So for that, we're going to use a vertex normal. Vertex normal. And again, just like before, with a mask, and we're going to use the B channel. Let's do a quick clamp, saturate. And let's invert this with uh, one minus. And we'll use a power just so that we get a kind of a strength of um, of our blending. So again, S, hold down S and click and blend power. And we're going to be adding that to um, our our runtime virtual texture height sample. And this one we're going to plug into our alpha. Okay, well, so that is set for now. Let's take a look at, at our result. So now you'll notice that in our, um, our material instance, and this one I believe already had, uh, did we already have that enabled? Yes, uh, apparently I already had this enabled. And as you can see, it's uh, if we turn this off, let's take a look. What do we get? As you can see, you know there is the there is no blending happening here. So let's go ahead and turn this back on. And there we have it. So this one uh, already provides a nice result. And if you move it around, you'll see that it just samples uh, samples the the landscape. But you still have this kind of harsh edge um, where, the, where the, the mesh meets the terrain. So let's try and fix that. Now the way I did this was in my Quixel material, I went into my details and I, I looked for tangent space normal. So I've turned that off. And from my normal here, I actually use the transform vector and plug that back in. So I go ahead and save that. Let's take a look at this. And there we have it. Now it's uh, a really nice blend between between the mesh. You can't. It's it's a lot harder to tell where the mesh ends, and uh, you know looking at the blending with the terrain. So let's take a look, kind of move this around a little bit. As you can see the blending is really happening really nicely. And now I'm going to move this to the side, the instance, and play around a little bit with the settings. So let's take a look at the, at the blend bias. So increasing the blend bias, as you can see, you know, kind of covers the mesh more and more. Increasing the power you can see it just um, if you look on the bottom of it you know it just gives it um, a, a much higher intensity and the blend distance as you can see it just also 
helps with uh, with that line you know if you uh, see it just fades it in so like I said I believe these are some pretty good settings to have in here as um, as parameters to uh, to help you control some of these values so uh, that is uh, that is it for the tutorial everyone hopefully uh, hopefully you found some use in this and um, yeah if you did please let me know and I'll, I'll try and do these tutorials as often as I can um, you know sometimes you gotta you gotta you have to adult as well and uh, well thank you for watching and uh, hopefully you guys have a have a great day alright take care everybody